Hello, let's start with the function reduce. The instructions state that the function reduce takes an array and reduces the elements to a single value. The reduce function loops through the array and applies any operation that you can put into a function to each element in the array while keeping track of the outcome of each loop. In this way, you can use reduce to do things like sum all the numbers in an array or multiply them all together. Here we have some example code. The variable numbers, or nums, is equal to an array of numbers. The variable add is set equal to a function definition. And this is how the reduce function is going to be called. Here the first argument is that array. That second argument is that function definition. And the third argument, the zero, we're going to see that it's the initial value for the accumulator. So here's how it works. The function has an accumulator value. Its job is to keep track of the accumulated output of each loop. It starts out equal to the initial value. So the accumulator starts, e starts out equal to the initial value. So in, that, in this function call to reduce, the accumulator is going to start and it's going to be set equal to the zero, this initial value. Then the array is iterated over, passing the accumulator and the next array element as arguments to the callback. The callback's return value becomes the new accumulator value. Then the next loop executes with this new accumulator value. In the example code above, the accumulator begins at 0. The add function is called with the arguments 0 and 4. The accumulator becomes 4. Then the function is called with the arguments 4 and 1, and the accumulator becomes 5. Finally, the function add is called again with the arguments 5 and 3, and the accumulator becomes 8, and that is return. So we're going to be constructing our own reduce function that accepts an array, a callback, and an initial value, and returns a single value. So let's first start by writing some pseudocode. Our input is going to be, let's write input. Our input is going to be an array, a callback, and the initial value. Our output should be a single value. So the first thing that we need to do is since our function definition for reduce should only work on arrays is we need to check to see if our first argument is an array. So let's write that. We're going to check to see if first arg is an array. Then we need to initialize our accumulator value. Accumulator value. After that, we need to check to see if the third argument, that initial value, when we call our reduce, is defined. If it's not defined, we need to define it. So let's say that we're going to check to see if third argument, the initial value, is defined. After that, we need to iterate over our array. And then through each iteration, we're going to be setting the accumulator to be the result of calling the callback with the arguments accumulator and the current element. So we're going to set the accumulator to be the result of calling the callback with the arguments accumulator and the current element. And finally, all we need to do is we need to return the accumulator value. Let's bring this up a little bit. So now let's start writing that reduce function. So we're going to say function reduce 
it's going to take three arguments. We have our array, our callback, and our initial value. Then we said that we're going to ch we're going to check to see if the first argument is an array. So we need a conditional that says if array that needs to be a capital array dot is array with the argument array. If that's true. We're going to go into that conditional body. So this array dot is array method checks this checks this argument to see whether or not it is an array. If it's not an array, it's going to return the boolean false. So it either returns true or false. So after that, we said that we're going to initialize our accumulator value. So we're going to say that accumulator is going to be initialized. And then following our pseudocode, we're going to check to see if our third argument, the initial value, is defined. So for that, we need another conditional. So if the initial is equal to undefined, If our initial is equal to undefined, then we go inside that conditional body and we're going to be setting our accumulator to be equal to the first element in our array. So the first element in the array nums over here is that four. So if our initial argument when that reduce function was not called, so when this reduce function was called and had they only called it with the arguments nums and add, and not this, this zero, this initial value, um, our function definition would be setting the accumulator to be equal to the first element in our array. So we're going to say that the accumulator is going to be equal to array at position or at index zero. So after we set our accumulator to be that element in our array at index zero, we need to remove that element from our array. The reason we remove it is because our, our reduce function is going to be iterating through that whole array and it's going to be calling our callback with our accumulator and the next index. However, if we set our, if that initial value is not defined and we set our accumulator equal to the first element of the array and we don't remove that element from our array, we're going to be calling our callback with the same number into our callback twice, so we need to get rid of that element in our array. So in order to do that, we are going to redefine array to be equal to array dot slice one. All this is doing is that it is removing that first element in our array. It's returning a new array and setting it equal to our previous array variable. So if our initial value is defined, or if it doesn't go into this function body, we need to have an else statement that sets our accumulator equal to our initial value. So let's do let's go over this one more time. If our initial parameter, when our reduce function is called, if that initial argument is not there, then we're going to be redefining our accumulator to be the first element in our array. However, if that initial argument is there, then our accumulator is going to be set equal to that initial variable. So after that, I'm looking at our pseudocode. Let's see, on line 10, our pseudocode says that we're going to iterate over the array. So to iterate, let's use the for each method. And we know that the for each method takes a callback um, with the argument element. So for each iteration of our array, we're going to be we are going to be setting the accumulator equal to the result of calling the callback with the arguments accumulator and that first element or that element for that iteration. 
So the array dot for each is iterating through our array of numbers, and for each iteration, it's setting our accumulator equal to the result of calling the callback with the arguments accumulator and element. So every time we iterate, the accumulator becomes a new value until the iteration process is finished. After that, the only thing we need to do is we need to return that accumulator value. So our function definition is looking pretty good. The only thing I see that we're missing is we we have a conditional um, on line 15 that says if our array is an array, we run all this code. So let's just add another conditional um, to have some functionality if our first argument is not an array. If our first argument is not an array, let's just return a string that says the first arg should be an array. Let's run this code. Yep. If we run this code with the variable nums, that array of numbers, the function definition add, um, calling reduce here, it says that we should log eight. Running the code, we're getting eight. So the only thing that I see that we could add to this is that the for each method, um, when it calls a callback, it has access to a couple more variables. It has access to the element, the index, This index variable is actually the, the current index that the iteration process is at. So on the first iteration, the element is going to be that first element, and the index is going to be 0. The second time it loops through it, or iterates through it, the element is going to be the second element, and the index will be 1. So let's just add those other arguments in it. So element index and the third argument that that callback has is actually the array. The this array variable is the the array that we're iterating through. It's the whole array of all the elements. So let's just add that to our callback. Um, let's add the element, the index, and the array. We want to do this because um, we want to ensure that our callback, when our reduce function is called and a callback is used, or a, a function definition is used in our reduce function that wants to have access to the index and, our, and the full array and is using that for whatever functionality they're using, we want to be able to make sure that they have access to that. So that's the only thing we're missing and looks pretty good. So see you guys next time.